The gentleman from New Mexico, Mr. Pierce. Hey, you Mr. Secretary? Nice to have you here today. Always a pleasure. I could tell. Uh, when when uh, the FSOC was uh, created, basically you were charged with three statutory mandates, and the first being to identify the risk to the financial stability of the United States. Uh, so that's pretty well established. Now, in uh, your report today, you say that, uh, that for the first time ever we can identify and respond to emerging threats to the U.S. financial stability. And then you go on to say that, uh, that the Council, the FSOC Council, convenes regularly to monitor market developments and take action when needed to protect the American people. Uh, and, and then you continue on even further to say that the FSOC is supposed to report on recommendations for specific actions to mitigate the risks. For over six years, the uh, Fed has uh, kept interest rates extremely low, in fact, near the zero level. Mostly the inflation doves in the Fed have uh, downplayed the effect on the market. Now, just last week, you had the head of the Boston Fed, uh, President Rosengren. He's been one of the biggest doves saying that there's no connection here. He came out and made a statement that says that he is concerned that easy money could be letting markets get out of hand as they were before the crisis. That sent the markets into turmoil, and so a relatively, a market that hadn't changed barely 1% in the previous month and a half suddenly was changing tremendously in the next three or four days. So the market is indicating some concerns that it might be true. So I guess my question, I would like to also submit that article for the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. I, and, and then you have also Virtu saying that they're not going to trade in, in uh, the bond market because they're just too hard to price. It's, it's too unstable. Now, to me, those are things that in my small town New Mexico way seem like they could be impacts on the stability, the financial stability of the United States. But I was kind of surprised because I'm, I'm just thumbing through, I haven't read the whole thing, but I'm looking at your report, not just what you said here today, and I don't see much about monetary policy affecting the markets the way that they seem to be. So my, I guess my question is, when you're ever sitting around talking to Janet Yellen, do you ever kind of look away from the TV cameras and say, uh, we ought to be talking about this, you know? It's uh, got a little effect, maybe. Do you ever bring that up? Congressman, um, obviously, uh, like all of our predecessors, um, uh, the chairman of the Fed and I talk to each other both in meetings and out of meetings, and I would hope that that remains true because uh, as the two senior economic uh, officials, Okay, you're, you're, you're just important. now talking, sir. I, I'm with all respect. I'm not trying to interrupt. If you were really getting in saying, yeah, we've talked about it and stuff, well, but you're saying you want the conversation to be friendly and continued, and my time is escaping and so I'm not going to bother you anymore. I'm just going to continue to make the points because I think that you're not looking at the financial instability at all that is coming up. When I'm taking a look here, the Wall Street Journal of May 20 says that it's not China, not the UK. It is the lack of liquidity in the markets that is going to be a big problem. When I take a look at Bloomberg, they, uh, they talk about today's post-crisis regulations intended to make banks safer and discourage risk-taking or eroding profits and forcing dealers to rethink their business model. These changes have created a vacuum in the bond market, making tra trading much riskier. And then they go on in the same report to say that, uh, the, that all of this matters because the $100 trillion global bond market is in an essential part of the machinery that keeps the world economy going. And it's not even being referred to in your report. And finally, then where it all comes down to, to hit the road is September 21st. 
A 1.9 trillion shortfall in U.S. state and local pension fund is poised to grow as near record low bond yields and global stock market turmoil reduce investment gains that they're expecting 7% rate of return and they're getting 1%. And none of this is in your report, which leads me to think that you're not dealing with the financial instability of the U.S. at all. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Time of the